Hey guys, today I want to talk about what we can do to change our children's behavior. If it's your first time here, welcome to my epic motherhood. My name is Katie. I'm a mom of six kids and I've been married for 13 years. I was born in Texas and then moved overseas for about 10 years and now I'm back in Texas and make lifestyle videos here on YouTube. If that sounds like your thing and you want to follow along, hit the subscribe button down below. So I had my first baby in 2008. She is now 12 and reminds me constantly that she'll be 13 this year. <laughs> But before that, my parents uh, fostered when I was about 18, and so we had several kiddos come through, and and I was living at home. I would often take the 4 a.m. feeding, and all that to say, I have been around children for a very long time, and I just have a little bit of experience in dealing with all the tantrums and everything. And um, I am just here to say that I absolutely do not have it figured out. <laughs> Parenting is crazy. People ask me all the time, how do you do it with six kids? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Guys, kids are hard. No matter how many kids you have, kids are hard. Why? Because it's another little person that you're talking to, that you're dealing with, that you're trying to interact with. And relationships are hard. And taking care of kids is a relationship. So I may have a lot of experience, but I do not have all the answers. However, one thing that we all deal with is behavior in our children that we want to change, okay? Whether it's throwing a tantrum, whether it's arguing, whether it's bickering among themselves, whether it's fighting over toys, whether it's selfishness, hitting, whatever the behavior is, there are many things that our children do that they should not do, that we have to correct them and tell them, you can't do this. And besides that, there are just a lot of behaviors that are kind of annoying and just want it to stop. So I'm here to talk about how you change those behaviors. And I have a bit of a bomb to drop on you, but I'm going to tell you something that my mom told me and it applies to children. And here it is. You cannot change other people. Okay. You may be thinking, what the heck, because you just told me that there are a ton of behaviors that children do that we have to teach them not to do. I mean, like, what if they run out into the middle of the street? They could get hit by a car. Like, it's dangerous sometimes. We have to change their behavior sometimes. So let me explain what I mean. All right, so, yes, there are things that we have to train our children not to do for their safety. And yes, there are behaviors that they do that we have to teach them are not okay. Like the way that they treat other people, being selfish, being mean with their words. There are things that socially are not acceptable, that relationally are not healthy or acceptable or good. And there are things that are annoying and sometimes we have to teach them, hey, you can't sing the same line of a song for 15 minutes. But... It is important for us as parents to recognize, like I said earlier, that our children are people and we can't force someone to change. Okay. You think about it. When your kid is three years old, there are things we can do to modify their behavior. We can threaten, we can give consequences, we can manipulate, we can, we can teach, we can train and Often, not always, that produces the desired effect. That will cause a behavioral change because at that age, they fear us or they will do what we say because we're bigger and stronger than them. 
However, what do you do when you have that attitude and you use those tactics when your child is 18 years old? (laughs) I have four boys. I'm not going to be bigger than them when they're 18 years old. (laughs) And they're not going to be afraid of me anymore. And obviously, I don't want them to be afraid of me. I don't want that kind of relationship with my kids. So if I'm thinking in the long term of how I want my child's behavior to change, I think that I have to change my goals for my kids. So if I'm looking at their behavior and I'm saying, okay, this needs to change, what do I actually want? And that requires taking a step back and looking at the big picture of what we desire for our children and what we desire for their lives. So obviously it's difficult to do that in the moment, dare I say impossible, but if we can remind ourselves in the quiet moments, in the moments where there's not a conflict, that we have different goals than that. Yes, there are times when we just want our kids to just But what do we want? We've got to look at our heart attitude and our goals for our kids. And and that needs to inform the way that we talk to them and what we require of them and how we teach them. So first, I want to look at my heart attitude. Sometimes, okay, more times than I want to admit, when I want my child's behavior to change, It's because I am being selfish or it's because my pride is wounded. I am embarrassed by the way that they're acting or I am offended that they would treat me that way. How rude. That's my problem. That's something I have to look at and I have to change. That is not a good reason for me to want to change their behavior. And we need to be honest with ourselves about why we want them to stop doing what they're doing. Second of all, let's look at our goals for them, okay? Why do I want my kid to stop saying the same line of a song over and over again for 15 minutes? Well, is there really a good reason? I mean, it's a little annoying, and so maybe at some point you could, you know, in a kind way say, hey, you know, would you mind if you stop singing that song? Or, hey, can we put on some music? But you know what? That kid isn't doing anything wrong. That kid is not disobeying. And so that behavior change that we want, we need to look at how we're talking to them about it because it may not be a big deal. It may be something that we need to let go. Now on another level, if a kid is fighting with their brother or sister and they hit them, okay? Not that my kids have ever done something like that. Okay, that is a behavior that does need to change. That is a behavior that is wrong. So when I look at that behavior, how do I make that change? How do I address that? My usual reaction is, oh my gosh, stop hitting your brother. What are you doing? I mean, but if I'm looking at the goals for my kids, all right, and I'm looking at, I want them to treat each other with kindness and really like, and if we're pulling it even further back in a bigger picture than that, why do I want my kids to treat other people with kindness? Because God is so kind to us and God is so slow to anger with us and he's so merciful to us and he is so good. And so because of his character and who he is, We desire as his children to emulate that behavior. We want to be more like him because he is perfect. So I want my child to stop hitting their sibling and to be kind to them and to not be selfish because that is what God is like. And I want them to be like that because that is what we aim for. Knowing that in this life we won't fully achieve that, but that God promises that those who follow him, he will sanctify them. He will make them more like himself. So how would I talk to my kid? How would I modify their behavior? Like I said, it starts with saying, I can't change that about them. The Bible says that all of us are wicked in our hearts. Our kids are little sinners. Our kids are selfish and mean and manipulative by nature. If you've known a three-year-old, you know that's true. We don't have to teach them to fight 
with each other. They just do it on their own. <laughs> so when we take a step back, we're realizing they are acting out of their nature. What do they need? Do they need to be kind just to be kind? No. They need Jesus. They need a heart change. And how do they get that heart change? The only way to get that is through Christ. So these behaviors that are not good, that we do need to change, are opportunities for us to preach the gospel to our kids, to share with them why they're doing this. Why are you hitting your brother? Because you are being selfish and that's sin in your heart. And what do you do about that? Run to Jesus. He saves us. He promises that those who run to him and repent, he'll forgive their sins. There's forgiveness and we can start over again. There is grace. And also bringing it around to, I need Jesus too. I feel the same way. I get selfish in my heart too. And I have to run to Jesus too. We're in this together. Coming alongside them and speaking the truth to them, it's so powerful because it's not about, you're such a terrible kid, how could you do that to your sibling? It's speaking truth and it's speaking grace. Now, do we always have time to share the gospel with our kids in every little fight? Absolutely not. It doesn't happen, okay? Sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't and that is okay. Sometimes we just have to address the behavior because there are other things going on. I have six kids. I know I always have like 15 wheels moving at once and that's okay. The biggest thing is the heart attitude that we are coming into that situation with. What is our heart attitude? What are our goals? What do we want to communicate to our children? Why are they doing this? And how do we need to address it with them? So that will enable us to have a lot more grace for our kids when they mess up. And it will enable us to speak the truth to them without making them feel guilty or small for what they've done. Because they're not doing anything worse than what we do in our hearts every day. We are just older, more mature, and act in a way that's more socially acceptable. But we have the same selfishness in our heart that they do. Okay, lastly, I just want to address behaviors that are dangerous, like really quick. Obviously, we're not taking the time to like preach the gospel or be super patient if our kid is running out into the middle of the road, okay? So there have definitely been times where I like screamed at my children because they were in a situation that was dangerous or that could potentially turn dangerous very quickly. Okay, like common sense, right? <laughs> but I feel like most of the time when I yell at my kids or threaten them with spankings or groundings or manipulate them by saying, oh my gosh, why are you doing this to mommy, blah, blah, blah. It's not a dangerous situation. It's either my heart attitude or me not treating that situation in a gospel informed way. So how do we change our children's behavior? We don't. God does. God is the one who changes hearts. It is not our responsibility. It is not up to us. It is up to us to recognize our own issues and speak the truth to our kids in love. So I hope this has been helpful. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button and you can do it. These children are given to us and it is hard. It is hard, man, but God is with you and he sustains, and he is good. Who's behind the door? Stop breathing under the door.